Nietzsche, 100, 125 years ago, best scientists thought that the entirety of the universe may be a couple thousand, three thousand light years. And then every decade, it seemed, in the 20th century, the universe got bigger and bigger and bigger. Of course, it wasn't the universe getting bigger. It was always that way. It was our understanding. How can we begin to get our hands around how big the universe really is? Well, sometimes I get asked the question, is there a wall out there that says <laughs> the end, the end of the universe, do not pass this point? Well, if there is a wall, then what lies on the other side of the wall? And is the universe infinite until you hit a second wall? Uh. I like to answer it in the following way. Look at Columbus. Columbus was asked the question, where is the end of the world? Is there a wall out there such that you fall off a waterfall and that's the end of the world? Well, Columbus may have said the following, that in two dimensions, as far as you can see, the universe seems to be um, infinite. You can go in a straight line and you never reach a wall. It, you just go round and around the earth, says Columbus. But in three dimensions, in three dimensions, looking out from outer space, you see that it's nothing but the earth that the Earth is finite in three dimensions. So in two dimensions, the Earth does appear to be infinite. You know, you can go round and around and around. But in three dimensions, the universe is just a ball. So today we think that perhaps our universe may be uh, three-dimensional. You go in a straight line and you never hit a brick wall. But perhaps, just perhaps, you come back to where you started from. If I had a telescope, perhaps the farthest object you can see is the back of your head. Because <laughs> perhaps light went all the way around the universe and you can see the back of your head with a telescope. But the universe from the fourth dimension may be a ball, just like Columbus said for the Earth. Now that we don't know for sure, okay? We're this still one the, looking that at That would be a finite, closed universe, but it's possible it could be open and infinite. I mean, th there are other possibilities. Right, so if the universe was a sphere of some sort, a bubble, it would be infinite in three dimensions. You fire an arrow, the arrow comes back and eventually <laughs> comes back this way. Or, but the universe is finite in four dimensions. It is nothing but a ball called a hypersphere. That's one possibility. Or it could really be perhaps infinite in all directions. We don't know for sure. The best evidence we have today shows that the universe seems to be flat. We can't detect with our instruments a curvature. But that could mean that our ball, our bubble, is just very, very big, and we're just like bugs, <laughs> bugs on a piece of a, of a bubble, and all we can see, just like with Columbus, all we can see to the horizon is flat. Well, let, let's now deal with what we know for sure. We can look back with our telescopes and see approximately 14 billion light years, uh, years ago, we're reflecting the speed of light over this period of time. So we, we know we can't see beyond that. So it seems not to make sense that just because we can't see beyond that, because light didn't have a chance to, even going as fast as it does at 300,000 kilometers per second, even going that fast over 14 billion years, that's as far as light could have been. So that, it would be highly unlikely to think, well, that's the end just because I can't see beyond it. So we physicists now have a candidate which takes us before the Big Bang itself. The Big Bang is called a singularity, where gravity becomes infinite. Now, that's silly. I mean, how can gravity be infinite? Singularity is nothing but a term to hide our ignorance. It's basically a statement that I am clueless. <laughs> Physics does not give you infinite things. Nothing is infinite in that sense, like infinite gravity. Therefore, string theory, we think, takes you before the Big Bang to the pre-Big Bang era. And that's where all the action is today. Many of my colleagues are proposing different kinds of pre-Big Bang scenarios, and we hope to test them with our next generation of space satellites. Now, what the implications of that would be is if there is pre-Big Bang, which means we're not the first, which means there's other stuff, other space-time, other things out there beyond that which we can see, number one, and number two, is because of the inflationary theory of, of, the, of, the, of the creation of this particular universe, that itself may lead to multiple universes. So we now seem to have good physics to be able to, to, to say that there are different ways we can have other kinds of existences, other universes beyond ours. 
There are several ways you can address that. Uh, one is the Bible, which talks about the universe being created from the mist. In other words, a universe from nothing. Now that actually has a certain amount of appeal, that there are bubbles simply popped into existence as a quantum fluctuation of nothing. If you take a look at our universe, for example, it has no spin. It's quite remarkable. You add up all the spins of the galaxies, they sum to zero. Maybe that's because we came from nothing. Nothing has no spin. Mm -hmm. And when the universe popped into existence, of course all the spins have to cancel to zero because we came from nothing. Also, electric charges and negative charges, positive and negative, cancel each other exactly. Why is it that positive charges are immediately canceled by a negative charge? If there was a slight imbalance in charge, our bodies would be ripped apart, we'd be thrown into outer space, overcoming gravity. That's how powerful this balance between positive and negative charges are. Why is that? Because maybe the universe came from nothing. Nothing also has <laughs> zero net charge. <laughs> and maybe that's why we came from there. Also, matter, antimatter. There's almost an exact cancellation between matter and antimatter. So there's a lot going for the idea that the universe popped into existence out of nothing. But there's the other possibility. <laughs> Perhaps we are a baby universe that we have an umbilical cord connecting us to our parent universe. When we have our satellites in outer space in the next decade, we will have snapshots of the infant universe, baby pictures of the infant universe. We will have baby pictures when the baby was coming out of the womb, and perhaps we'll have evidence of an umbilical cord, <laughs> an umbilical cord connecting our baby universe to a parent universe in the same way that a soap bubble can give rise to baby soap bubbles, perhaps our universe came from a parent universe. If we find that, what are the implications of that in terms of the extent of all reality, all that is? It means that we have to have a physics that goes beyond just our universe. Our universe is governed by something called the standard model, which seems to fit the particle data and relativity. But if we came from another parent universe, we have to have a physics that even goes beyond the standard model, beyond the quantum, f I mean, beyond relativity. And that could be string theory. So that is a metaphysics, a physics beyond physics. Each soap bubble has its own physics, but there is a metaphysics <laughs> that, that glues everything together. This also, by the way, answers a philosophical question that St. Thomas Aquinas asked many, many, many centuries ago. He said, is God a prisoner of time? Does God have to say, oh my God, I'm late. I'm late. I have to be on the other side of the galaxy right now. Is he a prisoner of time like us, or is he outside of time? St. Thomas Aquinas said, God has to be outside of time. But that seems so bizarre, so strange, it never went anywhere until now. Because if we have a soap bath, a bubble bath of universes, each universe has its own clock. So if we look at the bubble bath, where are you standing? Where are you standing looking at each bubble which has its own clock? Mm. You are outside time. And that's exactly what St. Thomas Aquinas said, uh, uh, that uh, we have to be outside time. 